In just the first five months of 2021, Florida has seen 761 manatee deaths due to these algal blooms, compared to 804 in all of 2018. You would be surprised to learn that the cause of this is many thousands of miles away, on a farm like this one. The perpetrator is this seemingly innocuous looking bag of fertilizer. In this video, we'll explore the hidden cost of inorganic fertilizers. Why do we even use them and how are they harmful? Nitrogen is one of the most important macronutrients for plants, critical for growth and health. It is in fact the most important marker of biomass. Even though nitrogen is the most abundant element in the atmosphere, plants can't absorb it in its natural form. Before industrial processes were invented, global agriculture depended on natural sources of nitrogen like animal dung, urine and mineral deposits like saltpeter. However, the industrial revolution of the 19th century required the production of more food at cheaper prices for the ever-growing hordes of factory workers. This meant we needed more nitrogen and we needed it cheap. This need for more food even triggered wars over the saltpeter and guano deposits in South America. In Germany, this need was acute because the soils were depleted by intensive agriculture. In 1909, German scientist Fritz Haber created a process that could create ammonia, a compound of nitrogen readily absorbed by plants, from thin air. Five years later, researcher Karl Bosch developed a more efficient way to produce ammonia at an industrial scale. This process came to be known as the Haber-Bosch process and was used extensively around the world to produce inorganic fertilizer. The introduction of inorganic fertilizers radically changed agriculture forever. Today, half the world's population is supported by agriculture that relies on inorganic fertilizer. If it weren't for the widely used Haber-Bosch process, many large countries may not have been able to feed their rapidly growing populations over the last century. However, the downsides of inorganic fertilizer are just as large and conspicuous as its benefits. In 2011, farms were the source of about 13% of the total global emissions, which amounted to 6 billion tons of greenhouse gases. So how exactly do nitrogen fertilizers contribute to emissions? Well, for one thing, the Haber-Bosch process that produces them takes an immense amount of energy. In this process, natural gas is burned to supply hydrogen that reacts with nitrogen to produce ammonia. The process consumes around 1-2% to of the world's energy supply. Emissions related to cheap nitrogen don't end at the production phase but continue on the farm. Inorganic nitrogen is volatile to begin with or becomes that way when microbes metabolize them. A lot of this volatile nitrogen is turned into nitrous oxide that escapes into the atmosphere. This is important to note because nitrous oxide has a warming potential that's 300 times that of carbon dioxide. That's 300 times! Since the Industrial Revolution, there has been a 16-20% to 20 increase in the atmospheric concentrations of nitrous oxide. And in the US, nearly 80% of the total human emissions of this gas can be traced back to agriculture. According to one study, nitrous oxide emission is the single most important ozone depleting emission and is expected to remain the largest throughout the 21st century. Setting aside the massive amounts of greenhouse gases emitted during the production and use of nitrogen fertilizers, there's also the large issue of nitrogen use efficiency. It's estimated that between 50 to 90 percent of nitrogen applied to farms is wasted. It's not going to plants. Instead, it either goes into the atmosphere, sinks into groundwater, or leaches due to rains and other processes. That is huge. Even if we take the lower bound of 50% wastage, that's a lot of greenhouse gases produced for nothing. In fact, the wasted nitrogen comes with its own set of lethal problems. One of the devastating side effects of wasted nitrogen from runoff is that it causes algae in the water to grow at a much faster pace than its ecosystem can support. These masses of algae are known as algal blooms and they can radically decrease and even eliminate the oxygen supply that is essential to the aquatic animal life below. They also block out sunlight, which can kill underwater plant life. Blooms can release neurotoxins that kill off sea mammals, sea turtles, fish, and even humans that come in contact with them. These fertilizers also have a much more diabolical impact on our farms and environment. In nature, there exist processes that recycle nitrogen. Nitrogen from the atmosphere is fixed by microbes into the soil, then other microbes transform them into plant-available farms. 
then another set of microbes transfer them to plant roots in exchange for sugars that the plant provides them. When large amounts of inorganic nitrogen are applied, these delicate symbiotic processes are disturbed. The plant, which can now get its nitrogen directly from the soil, will stop giving sugars to the microbes. A chain reaction leads to the decrease in microbes that convert nitrogen into its organic forms. It also promotes another set of microbes that volatilize nitrogen leading to leaching. Therefore, it creates a treadmill effect where soil that's been treated with inorganic fertilizer becomes more and more dependent on it. The soil dies as do the microbes in it. So, why do we care if the soil microbes die? Why does it matter if the plant gets its nitrogen from inorganic fertilizer or microbe-mediated organic farms? The nitrogen is definitely not a problem, but the microbes that rely on plant sugars not only provide nitrogen, but also micronutrients and minerals to the plant that its own roots are not capable of absorbing. These micronutrients are like vitamins. They're needed in small amounts, but they're crucial in the health of the plant and those who eat them. The decreased micronutrient absorption coupled with increased nitrogen has created plants with large biomass but barely any nutrition. This is why modern food has far less flavor and nutrition than food that came before industrialized agriculture. Sure, agricultural production may have exploded thanks to inorganic fertilizers, but the crops being produced have been robbed of vitamins and minerals essential to human development, leaving us nutrition deficient. An undernourished population is the hidden cost of modern agriculture, and inorganic nitrogen fertilizers are one of the key perpetrators. So what's the solution to this problem? Is there even one? Or have industrial farming techniques destroyed the soil beyond repair? Spoiler alert, regenerative practices can be extremely effective at building living soil. Cover crops, plant probiotics, and composting are low-cost and powerful alternatives that produce healthier crops, and therefore healthier humans. Tell us in the comments, when did you realize this was a globe-threatening problem?